Welcome to lesson two. This is another tutorial I took from MIST and about two, two and a half years ago ported to MISTER. The time I didn't really know that much. And after looking at the code the last few days, I cleaned it up and I realized that it does some interesting things. I want to shout out to my guests for giving us, changing the demo and um, doing a pull request for this cool MISTER graphic. And let's take a look and jump into what the code's doing now. Again, what I suggest you do is just step one, just build the existing code and put it on your mister and it should give you this mister graphic. Um, if we take a quick look at Cordis and I just built it, let's look at start at the top like usual. So lesson two, and this is the standard MU top from the template. Um, very simple, just change the aspect ratio in the config string. And we'll change that and we're going to make it load a file so we can load an image. In this HPS IO, when I copied it, I just made this change today. I had set wide to zero and that was a bug when I went through and tried to update this. I was missing every other pixel. And that's because when you set wide to one, the data that's passed through the HPS IO is 16 bits, not eight. So IO control D out in all of that um, disk stuff turns into 16 bits wide and the IO control address instead of incrementing by one since you're getting two bytes at a time will increment by two and so that's why I was missing every line it was very confusing uh, same PLL from lesson zero uh, someone in one of the comments pointed out this might be the wrong clock speed and that's completely possible um, and then instead of the last demo we had just a VGA module and this one is has an SOC, which usually stands for system on a chip. Um, if we look at this SOC, we'll see that this is actually pretty complicated for what it's doing. And, and I don't know that I would have implemented it this way. Um, in the left in the files, you can see there's an image.quip and that's a ROM. If we go into the IP components, you'll see there's a one port ROM and that's pre-initialized with the image, the hex file for the Mr. logo, or originally it was the bird. So if we pop open the SOC, you'll see we wire up our VGA controller. And this time it has CPU clock, CPU write, address, and data, so that the um, we have this, and then here's the ROM, the image ROM. And so we have this chunk of code that on reset increments sets copy in progress and increments the address one at a time until it hits the end of the ROM. And what it's basically doing is on each clock cycle, it's setting zero, one, two, three for the address. And then Q is the output. And it's taking these eight bits of wire and we wire it into the data. If we look at the VGA, uh, and this seems kind of a little redundant because now in the VGA, instead of just using the ROM as is, because the what we could do is generate an address for each pixel and then ask the ROM to give us back the correct graphic, which is usually how we do it. But here, for some reason, we have a whole video RAM and maybe that's for a later demo. Um, and so here's an array of eight bits, 160 times 100. And that gives us, you know, 1600, which gets us to 14 bits. If you wanna see, you know, there's a little bit of math behind this. Um, we come back over here and switch you know, 160 times 100 gives us 16,000, and then 2 to the 14, so 14 bits or 0 through 13, gives us 16384, which is large enough to hold our 16,000. So that's why it's 14 bits. Coming back over to Quartus, um, and then this little chunk of code, write VRAM, if the CPU is writing, then we need to take the data from the ROM and put it into our memory. So we basically at startup copy it into the memory. And then if we look down here, the video counter is incrementing and it's grabbing a pixel out of the video counter and it's doing black if it's out of range, I guess. And then we have the same code from before where we take our 332 and we um, make it bigger. And I just wanted to, let me just type some code in here to show there was a question about the last video. If we take 332, then for red, which right here is 
8 bits and we do just expand it, then we would have, if let's say we're going to try to do full red color, we would get 1, 1, 1, and then 0, 0, and we got to get this to 8. So that's 6, 7, 8. Whereas if we were to extend it and concatenate three ones, then three ones, and then the first two ones, then we get you know, all of it set. And so if you were to put this into the web browser, into Photoshop, you would see that this red is much darker and this is a brighter red. And you can't get a white if you don't have R, G, and B all set to one, otherwise you get a gray. And so it doesn't really make sense to just truncate it with zeros. And this is because we're using 332 color in the example and to store the image on disk or in ROM, but the mister itself has eight bits of color support. Okay, so now let's go look at, we run this and we'll get the output of the mister logo. And it'll look something like this. And again, it looks kind of pixelated. I don't know if it's because of the way the image was made or because the uh, there's very few bits of color because we're just doing three through two. Okay, so let's modify this code. And we're gonna go kind of, first we're gonna throw this deep brand module in. I just looked through the mister and found one to reuse that was in the SMS. And this is nice. It takes the address width, so we can set it to 14. Each byte is defaults to eight. And then what's nice about this one is we can put an init file in so we can um, put that same hex file for the Mr. logo as the init. Uh, one of the things to notice in the, my second bug today was this write enable A for whatever reason is defaulted to one. I, I think I would default it to zero because if you forget to put it in the code like I did, then it means it's always allowing writes. And so if you have one half of this dual ported RAM that's just for read access, but you forget to set the write to zero, then it's always writing zeros because you didn't put anything in data A. So again, that gets defaulted to zero and it tends to write zeros into the RAM. And then for this example, zero is black and I just got a black screen and I was very confused. As soon as I set the write enable A, which is what I was using to zero, then everything worked. So let's go back to the tutorial and let's take a look. So we. One of the things I want to mention too, since we're talking about Mr. is Alexi changed around the way this works. Normally, if you were in Cordis, you could use their system to add and remove files and it would put it in the QSF. The problem with that is the QSF has a lot of different settings in it. And when we want to upgrade the sys or add new pins or whatever needs to change as we go forward, it's really nice to be able to just throw away the QSF and throw in a new one. And so what the way we did that was we, in the QSF, every QSF has a files.qip included, and then we put the files for this core in the files.qip. And that gives us two things. One, we don't delete the files.qip when we replace the sys, so we can just drop in a new QSF and just hit compile. And also we know now where to look for what files are for this core. So. This is the way it started. We had the lesson two. Uh, we have the standard sys, the VGA, the SOC, and then we're going to add the DPRAM and we're going to remove the. Um, so let me just grab this and show you the notepad. We're going to just load it up in notepad right over here, and we're going to remove this this image shot clip because that's the ROM. So we don't we don't want that. Okay, throw it in there and we'll save that. Coming back to the web, what's the next step? Okay, so let's. I'm going to work backwards from VGA, and what we're going to do is instead of this memory array, we're going to use the dual ported RAM module. And so we're basically want to get rid of this, and then we're going to short circuit in a second. We'll come to it. We're going to get rid of all of the code in inside um, the SOC, and we're going to make it simple and just call the VGA. We probably could get rid of the SOC and just have the VGA module, but for now. We'll do that. So basically, let's grab this DPRAM. We'll copy that. 
and then let's switch back over to Cortis. And right down here, we've got, this is where we have the video memory. So let's get rid of that. Also, now the pixel is coming out of this DPRAM, so it no longer wants to be a register. It wants to be a wire to connect the register that is coming from this. And by the way, here we init image.hex is the name of our file, and that's a relative path in the same directory as that DPRAM. So if you, otherwise you'll see an error probably. We want to come down here, and now that we've already set the pixel, we don't need this or any of these things. We can just get rid of these pixels. And then I had an error because I forgot to get rid of this pixel, and we don't want that. Okay, and maybe we do want to set it to black later, but for now, that should work. And let's just go back to the web and see if we missed anything. So we did that. We removed, oh, we need to remove that. Okay, we'll do that in a second. We changed that to pixel, and then we removed those lines. So let's go back, and I'll show you what I forgot to remove, which is this chunk here was used to write the RAM to the CPU. So we're going to get rid of that. Um, and now this is just simpler. So we're going to take these IO control lines in from the top level, and that comes from the HPS. And, and that'll make more sense in a second. But basically, this is dual ported RAM, so there's two sides to it. The A side is just going to be read. So on each clock, the video counter is which byte of RAM from, or which byte we want from the ROM or from the image. And then it comes out as the pixel. And later in this code, we're incrementing the video counter. And then the B side is just used at the beginning or when we load a new image. And that's going to use, because we only have one clock in this, it's going to use the same system clock. And then when write is set, it'll go loop through each address of the image and store it away using data. And this data A is kind of, or data B is the input. And then if you have a Q, that's the output of the ROM. So you can have data B and Q B if you wanted. You'd have to wire it up differently. But for this case, that's what we want to do. Now we want to come up to the top and we're going to change this, the names of these just to be a little simpler. Let me find that. Oh, maybe I didn't paste it in the web. So we're going to Oh, wait, did I? Or maybe I wanted to leave it. No, I think we want to change these. OK, now let's look at the SOC. And again, we're going to need to just change just about everything. And I just pasted it in there because I don't think it's that interesting. But we're basically going to just, we're going to pass IO control signals in, and we're going to get them. So this is just a pass through. Like I said, we don't really need this file anymore. We could just move this VGA module up to the lesson. OK, now let's look at the lesson. Let's start at the top. And the first thing we want to do is tell the config, the Linux side, that we have an OS, you know, we want to allow people through the OSD to load a file. So we put F for file. One means, and we won't really use it in this lesson, but it's good to put the one in there, means when they load the files, send it to us under IO control index one. And that one is what matches up. And then I name the images in the repo BIN. You'll need to throw those in a lesson two directory inside games. And that way it only shows things with the extension bin. You can put more extensions there, or I think there's a way to put a wildcard. Go ahead and look at the docs for that. Okay, so now the next thing we wanna do is this HPS is where we get data from Linux. And so the Linux side, when you load a file from the OSD, is gonna put it on a bunch of wires for us. And it's gonna clock the data through one clock cycle at a time. So we need this download and the write. So when it sends us data, it'll set download to one and set write to one. Uh, we don't want index. I need to change that in the file. We want data. And then we want the address. Maybe this should be a D out. And then we will pass connect these wires through the HPS. And basically what happens is when the user selects the download in the OSD, 
Again, these go high, and then on each of these clock cycles, which we passed here, address goes 0, 1, 2, 3, until it hits the end of the file. And each time it sends us the data byte from that. And again, if this wide was set to 1, we would have to change data out to 15, and address would get incremented by 2 each time. Okay, the clock stays the same. And now we need to update this SOC so we can pass this data in. And for write, this, maybe we should call this something different. It's a little bit overloaded, but we want to write to the ROM when we're, write is set and IO control download. If we did have an index and we included that, then we'd want to also check that IO control index was zero. Uh, sorry, not zero. Zero would be for a ROM. That IO control index is one, again, going back up to the top, because we set F to one. And I'm going to hit compile. And I believe that should be all of the changes. And then you should get an OSD file open. You should be able to load a bin, and it should display the image.